Fritz Horstmann from the Albers Foundation. Joseph Albers gave us many ways to think about color. Today, we're going to look at another of my favorite exercises from his book, Interaction of Color. His students called it the four color worlds. In the book, it is simply called quantity. The basic idea is that you use four colors to make four separate compositions or pictures. Each composition will contain all four colors and be made of the same shapes. The challenge is to make the compositions feel as different from one another as possible. How much of each color you use is the key. Let's look at an example from Interaction of Color. This is actually a reproduction of one of Albers' students' projects from his class in the 1950s when he was teaching at Yale. You can see that the colors the student was using were dark blue, light blue, tan, and pink. And then each composition is made up of vertical strips. Even though each of the four compositions has the same four colors and is made up of the same kind of shapes, look how different they feel. One is mostly dark blue and the other colors are all off to the left side. One is mostly pink, but with a fair amount of light blue and only one little strip of dark blue. The one that is mostly tan has just four thin strips just to the right of its center. The slightly thicker pink and light blue surround the two very thin dark blue strips. And finally, in the lower right, there's a mostly light blue composition that has thin strips of the other colors fairly evenly spaced. Not only are the four compositions different because they have more of one color than the others, they also differ in the ways colors are arranged. They have different rhythms. Let's look at one more before we get started. Here we see four separate compositions, each made of a warm yellow, a light purple, a rich blue, and a soft rosy pink. Even though each composition is made up of the same rectangles and oval, the order of the colors is changed. Just look at how different each one feels. The quantities are changed, and so how the colors interact with one another changes. We're going to try this ourselves now. To get started, you're going to need four different colors of paper. You can use any colored paper that's available. If you have construction paper, that might be very good. Or maybe you want to find some colors in magazines that you can cut out. Or possibly, uh, if you have some paint, you could paint four different pieces of white paper four different colors. Um, so I have some magazines. I'll, I'll go through those and see what I can find. I also have some construction paper, so I may be able to use some of that. Um, we'll also need scissors, glue, and a piece of white paper that we can stick everything onto. Okay, let's get started. I'm going through magazines to look for colors that I can use for the four color worlds, looking for big areas of color, so like this nice big area of green that I can use. I've gathered these four colors of paper that I can use. I've got this green that I found in a magazine, two colors of colored construction paper, and an old manila folder that I can cut up, and this white paper on which I can work. So there's a lot of different ways you could make four different compositions that would feel different from one another. What I'm going to do is cut four rectangles that are each the same size, which will be the backgrounds for my compositions. So first, I will cut those rectangles as one of each color. And I want my rectangles to be the same size, so actually I'm going to use a pencil to lightly draw. Okay, so I have four rectangles, which are going to be my four backgrounds. Now, remembering that each composition needs to have all four colors in it, um, I need to now find ways to bring these colors into each of these compositions. So first I have to decide, well, what sort of shape am I going to use, or multiple shapes? I think I'm going to use triangles. Cutting as many little triangles as I can so that I'll have lots of material that I'll be able to use when I'm making my compositions. But I think first I will 
glue each of these onto the paper so that I'll have something solid to work on. Remember, each composition needs to have all four colors in it. So to begin, I'll just put at least one into each of the other compositions. And see where that leaves us. Okay, we're off to a good start, but I think we can push this even further. Probably won't need all of the material that I've cut. Maybe this one will be uh, really regular like this, and maybe all the all of the triangles will be in a line on that one. I feel like I want several pink ones. I think I like that pink and that green together. Really so I'm not gluing anything yet. I'm just I'm still experimenting. Oh, and I want lots of little ones on this. When you have something that you're happy with, then you can glue it together or you can glue it part way and then continue. I'm pretty happy with what I've made here, so I'm going to now glue this together. I finished gluing together my four worlds. You can see I've made four compositions. Each has four different colors in it, and each is using only triangles. And I tried to make each as different as possible from one another, as if they are each their own color world. You can see that each one has a color as the background color, and in each case, that is the dominant colors, the color you see the most of. But the way I've made my arrangement of triangles, I attempted to make each one feel as different as I could. So I clustered everything over on this side in the one with the uh, manila folder in the background, and all the spacing is more or less regular. In this one, there's only three large triangles sitting on top in each of a different color. So they're feeling different than the sort of density over here. Here, I really like the way that the pink and the green were playing with each other. And so I put lots of pink triangles together in sort of this nice rhythm and just one each of the gray and the manila. And then on the gray background, sort of the opposite of that, that green was so quiet on top of the gray and just two small sliver triangles of the pink and the manila separated by quite a bit from the green. Now it's your turn. Find four colored papers and make four compositions that each use all four colors and see how different you can make those compositions feel from one another. I use triangles, but you could use any shape that you like. I tried to make my compositions feel different from one another by using different amounts of the different colors and giving spaces in different places and sort of changing the rhythm of each one. So see what you can do. If you make something you're happy with, take a photo and please share it. We would love to see it. Let's look at a few more examples from Interaction of Color. Here we have circles in orange, dark green, yellow, and blue green. This seems to really capture the idea of four worlds, don't you think? Or 
diverse strips and squares in purple, red, gray, and yellow, like wild confetti. Or horizontal strips in green, gray, purple, and red. For this one, we actually have the student's original work. This was made by a student of Albers named Mark Strand, who went on to become a great poet. You can see that a few of the strips have fallen off over the years. He was working with colors he cut from magazines and other colored papers, just like us.